Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Let's open the word, Joshua. Uh, let's, let's look at Joshua 3. Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> verse 1 through 5. We'll read all that. Joshua 3, verse 1 through 5. Hallelujah. Y'all have it? Okay, let's read that together tonight. Ready, read. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place. Come on, keep going. For and Joshua said to the people, "Sanctify yourselves." For well, I just for tomorrow. <laughs> Can anybody believe for tomorrow move? Tell your neighbor tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Tell him it won't be long now. Hallelujah. 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 Some of y'all didn't even get excited about that. I'm talking about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go, go to, uh, let me, let's, let's skip right ahead. Go, go to 2 Kings uh, 7. Let's deal with something right now. 2 Kings 7, because some of y'all just, just kind of tripped on me right there. You didn't even say nothing. You didn't even look like nothing was say, said to you. Glory to God. That man just said tomorrow. Well, that's what he tended Joshua. I'm your Joshua. I'm not, I'm not up here playing around. I'm your Joshua. I'm your Elisha. Are y'all in 2 Kings 7? I want you to see something here. Because, see, some of y'all, you ain't saying that because you're in a mess. Well, in, 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 this, in this chapter 7 here, the people were in a mess. The Samaritans, they were besieged by the Syrians. The Syrian army uh, had, had, had besieged the entire nation, and they wouldn't let anybody come in or go out, such that the people were in, in such bad shape, their economy totally tanked, and they were, they were uh, so bad off, they started eating, eating their children. That's bad off. You couldn't afford a loaf of bread. You couldn't afford some bologna and cheese. You couldn't afford anything. It, it got to the point that they started eating each other's children. You think you have it bad? You think you're going through a rough spot right now? They were eating each other's children. It's not nearly as bad as you think it is. Glory to God. So here they are. They're besieged, right? So then a man of God has the nerves, the audacity, the unmitigated gall, Pastor Kim, to give a word from the Lord that went totally against what everybody saw. Everybody's in dire straits. And the man's going to give a word of prosperity to a poor nation. He's going to give them a 24 hour promise. Are you there, 2 Kings 7? Then Elisha. That's the prophet. That's the man of God on, said, hear the word of the Lord. He's divinely inspired to say something. So when I say something to you, I'm not just talking out of my guts. I don't 
don't try to come up with some catchy cliche to say that gets you to, you know, see if I can get them stirred up before I preach and see if I can get them to come sow a seed. They ain't trying to get you to sow no seed. I'm the one sowing the seed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm sowing the seed. When I declare word for the Lord, I'm sowing a seed trying to find good ground to get it into. Because if God can find good ground to get the seed of the word into, it's going to produce a harvest in your life that will never, never, never be forgotten. Hallelujah. <laughs> so hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Did it just say tomorrow? tomorrow. tomorrow. No, they've been in a mess so long. Now you understand, this, this mess didn't just happen yesterday. Because you don't, you don't get in such a mess like that where you start, you're down to eating kids the next day. It took a while for this economy to tank. It took a while for, for all, of their, all their supplies and resources to run out. In other words, you can imagine they've probably been in this thing a few months, a year, a couple years. This thing has, has gotten so bad. Some of y'all saying, Lord, how long? I don't know how long it's been, but I can tell you that by tomorrow. It doesn't matter if it's been days or weeks or months or years. When the word of the Lord says tomorrow, you better get some excitement in you because by this time tomorrow. That's a bold statement, man. Tomorrow about this time. A seal of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seals of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Implied, everything's going to be cheap because there's going to be plenty of it. In other words, you know, everybody understands uh, basic economics, the law of supply and demand. When supply is, is, is low and demand is high, prices skyrocket. But he said, God's about to, whew, this is a vibe year. God's about to interrupt. God's about to interrupt and disturb the natural course of things right now. And, and, and in, in 24 hours, he's going to turn things around in 24 hours. It ain't going to take long. It won't be long now. Lord, I know you've been praying. I know you've been fasting. I know you've been crying out to the Lord. Well, here comes your word tonight. Well, I'm speaking on, on apostolic and prophetic authority. I'm telling you that by this time tomorrow... See, me and Jesus have been hanging out, man. At crazy hours, crazy times. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Last night, I think I got to bed about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And about 3 o'clock, I get up. No? Lord, I'm going to prayer at 7. He ain't care nothing about that. Now, I said, Lord, I'm coming. So I'm speaking on apostolic and prophetic authority. Now watch, watch, sit down, sit down, sit down. You, you can get excited in a minute. By this time tomorrow, is, it's going to change. Tell you that, everything's changing by tomorrow. Everything's turning around by tomorrow. Now, 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 this next verse shows us shows us uh, what you got to get over. Verse 2. So uh, an officer. This is a guy in authority. <laughs> 
So an officer on whose hand the king leaned, or we could say the, the king's right hand man. Just because you're high up in rank doesn't mean you're walking high in faith. See, he's high up in rank, but all he, he's high up in intellectualism. He's high up in naturalism. He's high up in humanism. He's high up in reasoning. And so when he hears a word from the Lord, it butts up against his intellect. When he hears a, a radical word, this is a radical word. Turn of hours, turn around. And this man said, man, it's been months, it's been years, we've been in this mess. You can't listen, 24 hours is impossible. It's buttoned against all his understanding of how economies work. Trust me, if he's in the king's cabinet, he understands economic systems. He understands that, that even if something happened, even if the windows of heaven, he says that, even, even if God opened the windows of heaven, it would take a long time for, for the rain... To produce crops. Y'all gotta catch this. Y'all, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I didn't even see that before. He's the man of God said tomorrow. That, that's some supernatural growth. Because right now they don't have any flour. Right now they don't have any wheat. There's no crop, there's nothing in the ground. And the man said, by this time tomorrow. That, that, shoot, that eliminates the time it takes to plant the seed, to grow the seed, to grow the harvest, to harvest it up, to thresh it, to beat it, to grind it, to make flour, to get it to distributors, to get it to the market. You mean God's going to shrink down a year worth of processing? into one day so then you understand why this man who was an intellectual in the king's court couldn't grab a hold of it he said this 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 doesn't make any sense this this the thing then systems don't work this way because thank you holy ghost hey, look what he said here he said look if the lord will make windows of heaven in heaven in other words if the lord would, would send rain Could this thing be? He knows God, it, take, it takes too long for that to happen. Whew. Yeah, y'all beat it. Could this thing be? Now, the man of God from the word made a statement that ended in a period. This man comes back with a question. On what God already made a statement on. Matter of fact, my Bible, I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible in verse 1, he said, thus says the Lord. That should have been it right there. Now, listen, when you see these Samaritans, don't think of Samaritans as being some foreigners, some aliens who don't know God. Samaritans served God. They were, people, they were the children of God. In fact, they, they were mixed Israelites. Y'all understand Jesus went to the woman of Samaria. They served the same God. They served God, too. They were mixed. And yet this man couldn't see how God could do something so big. Remember I told you Sunday how when you hear the word of the Lord, it sounds too big. It sounds unreal. It sounds unbelievable. But we looked at Mark 9, 23, when Jesus said, if you can believe. Come on now. All things are possible. Come on to him. Now, what's this man's problem? He don't believe. He can't believe what the word of the Lord came uh, and, and said. Now, watch this. So he said, could this thing be? Could, could, what do you mean, could this thing be? I said it's going to be. The Lord said it's going to be. What do you mean, could this thing be? And he said, in fact, 
In fact, <laughs> by the time he added the word, the phrase in fact, that means it's a done deal. In fact, you shall see it with your eyes. But boy, what? what? Now, isn't this terrible? I, I'm, 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 I'm concerned that there are going to be a lot of people in the house of God who when God gives all the goodness and all the prosperity to his people that there'll be some on the sideline who will see it but won't eat of it because when a word came they still uh, kept questions how could this be I'm black. How could this be? I'm a woman. How could this be? I'm a single parent. How could this be? I don't have a degree. How could this be? You don't know how much debt I'm in. But if God said it, that's what we used to say back in the old days. If God said it, that settles it. Oh, you better tell your neighbor, if God said it, that settles it. As a matter of fact, whether you believe it or not. See, we used to say, God, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. No, 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 you don't have to believe it. If God said it, that settles it, period. The problem is, if you don't believe it, you will see it, but you won't eat of it. I told y'all, I don't want to go to the state fair and see other people eating big old corn dogs. And I don't want to see other people eating big old turkey legs and I'm just looking around the grum belly. No, 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 no. If I see it, I want to enjoy it too. I mean, I praise God for your new house and I praise God for your new car and I praise God for how he's blessed you, but I believe God will do it for me too. You'll see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. So what's the problem? This man had an issue with unbelief. And if, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we dealt with this Sunday, hit it hard. If you don't deal with unbelief, then it doesn't matter how promising the word of God is. Doesn't matter how much, how potent that word is, because the word will produce. If you don't deal with unbelief in your own heart, you won't eat of it. And the word of God. Whew, while I've been praying, the Lord's been giving me scriptures to keep going over and over in my prayer. One, Psalm number 33, verse four. Where it says the word of the Lord is right. Psalm 33, verse four. The word of the Lord is right. You don't have to turn to it. They get on the screen. Just write it down. Psalm 33, verse four. The word of the Lord is right. Is that right? Yes. It's right. It's right. <laughs> it's right. Psalm 119, verse 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. You better hear this tonight. You better hear this. You better hear this. Psalm 119, verse 89. The word of the Lord is forever what? Settled in heaven. Glory to God. So his word is right. And his word. See, we keep saying, I believe it, that settles it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. The word is right. And the word is settled. Then he, he adds to me, he always gives, brings back to my spirit, John 17, verse 17. Where he says the word, his word is truth. <laughs> that's, that's how you get sanctified that's how you get sanctified remember Joshua said sanctify yourselves for tomorrow why are you going to sanctify yourselves is get into that word you're going to get into that word and the word is going to first start some separation 
The words will separate soul and spirit. Joints and marrows. Thoughts and intents of the heart. The word's going to get in there and start slicing and dicing and cutting away and severing. The word's going to start separating truth from error. <laughs> Is that right? See, do you understand why we have to spend so much time in the word? Because most of us have grown up on error. I'm not talking about just church. I'm not talking about, because I mean a lot of error in church. But I mean just, just by human conditioning. We've been raised up in error by human conditioning. By the education system of this world, we've been raised up in it with plenty of error. And all around us on television and everywhere you look, there's all kind of error. Well, thank God for the word, which is truth. And I can sanctify, be sanctified by the word and the Holy Ghost, who's the spirit of truth. Right? Yeah, he's going to teach me all things. And so when I get a new word, he's going to be, he's going to get there and say, nope, psh, truth, psh, error, throw that out. Psh, truth, psh, th error, throw that out. <laughs> Hallelujah. RST. RST. The word is right. The word is settled. The word is truth. It's right. It's settled. It's truth. It's right. It's settled. It's truth. It's right. It's settled. It's truth. Say it again. It's right. It's settled. It's truth. Now, if I know it's right, it's settled, and it's truth, then I gotta, I gotta uh, rearrange my thinking to it. And I've got to get so uh, determined and resolute that whatever it says or whatever he says is right, is settled, and it's truth. So if a prophet of God stands and says, by this time tomorrow, everything is going to turn around, thus says the Lord, then I got to settle in my heart, Angie, that that word is right, it's settled, and it's truth. Doesn't matter if, if, doesn't matter if I can't see how it can get done. Doesn't matter how much time he said, doesn't matter how long it's been. If God said it, then it's right, settled. And it's truth. Y'all know the scripture? Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. So when the prophet of God stands up here and says, that by this time tomorrow. Y'all yeah. gotta hear this here. This is nowhere in my notes. I'm not even, I'm, this, this is just the Holy Ghost here. I'm still trying to get to Joshua here. But when the Lord prompts me to declare a prophetic promise that by this time tomorrow, Now, many of us probably have several things we can list. Lord, you know, I, I like this change by tomorrow, this change by tomorrow, this change. I'm not, I don't know what's going to be changed, but I know by this time tomorrow, something's going to be changed. And, and, and I got a feeling it's probably your main thing. I mean, it's probably that very thing that you've been praying about and seeking God's face about, you sold about it, you've been asking God for it, I'm telling you that by this time tomorrow, something's going to change. The main thing's got to change by this time tomorrow. Tap your, neighbor, tap your neighbor and say, something's moving, something's changing, something. While I'm sitting up right in here, something's moving. Something's changing. While I'm sitting right up in here, something's moving and something's changing. I'm, 
I'm, I'm trying to get out of here. This, this is not. <laughs> How many of y'all can believe this? If you can believe, sit down. Sit down. We might as well park here for a few more minutes. I'm telling you, get out, get out of your intellect. Get out of your intellect right now. Get out of your mind right now. Go out of your mind right now. Let your spirit grab a hold of what God's saying tonight. since last Wednesday is can you believe it because 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 believing and unbelief is our issue that's where the line is drawn it's not can God do it it's right it's settled it's truth it's right it's settled it's truth You gotta tell your soul, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Something's happening. Tomorrow. You gotta shut your mind down. Get out of your mind. Come on, sir. <laughs> See, now here's the problem. In your mind, your because see our minds. Uh, we, 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 we like to, we like to figure things out. Our minds want to compute things. Our minds want to solve problems. And God is saying, I don't need you to solve the problem. Your only work is to believe. I don't need you to figure out anything. See, that man was figuring something. He might have been the, the economist for Samaria. Understood the Department of Commerce and the Department of Agriculture, how long it would take to get this thing to turn around. But see, God said, I don't need you to figure anything. I don't even need your help. Because if I gotta use four lepers, see here, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this here. That that God God used people outside the camp. For exiles. Uh, Tell your neighbor, God doesn't need your help. Y'all got to hear that. He doesn't need you to figure anything out. Well, I'm preaching to myself, boy. I'm preaching to myself. So y'all excuse me for a moment if I just preach to myself. 
He doesn't need me figuring anything out. He just needs me to believe when a word comes that is right, that is settled, that is truth, and it's go- it shall come to pass. So some of y'all know this story. You, you know what happens to these four lepers sitting out there by the entrance of the gate. They're outsiders. They've been outcast because they're, they're lepers. And, and th- these guys get the idea in them. They say, wait a minute. Uh, we're sitting here at this gate and we're going to die one way or the other. Either leprosy is going to kill us or hunger is going to kill us or the Syrians are going to kill us. So let's do this. They said, why do we sit here until we die? Now, think it. Now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They didn't just arrive at this gate. They've been at this gate. But this thought or this idea doesn't even come into their heads until the man of God releases a word. <laughs> These guys been at this gate here. But once the man of God released the word of God, then some things got into motion. Tonight, I released the word of God and I declare there's some things that are going into motion that you don't even know about. You are not even aware of. You have no clue what's going on. But God is getting the wheels in motion to bring about a turnaround in your life. All you have to do is believe. What are these guys... Where these four lepers all of a sudden get this idea from? All of, all of a sudden? They all of a sudden get a thought? God did it. God gave a word to the man of God. The man of God released a word to the people. Then he puts a thought in the, in the minds of these lepers. All of a sudden they go, why, why are we going to sit here till we die? Tell you what. If we go in there to the Syrian camp, if they kill us, we'll die. But if we sit here, we're going to die anyway. Nothing to lose. So let's go on in, on in there and just see what happens. And the Bible says. Y'all, y'all, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Verse 5. Verse 5. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp. What? To their surprise. Wait a minute. So the lepers went there fully expecting the Syrians to be there. They're taking a chance. Four lepers are, are operating on a maybe. To their surprise, no one was there. Verse 6. Are y'all ready for this? For the Lord had caused. The Lord had caused. The Lord had caused. The Lord has ca- had caused. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is causing your enemy. To hear something. Is that what it says here? The Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great. But well, we've been praying that. What were we praying this morning in prayer? We're praying for God to raise us up as an exceeding great army in this house. Now, wait a minute. How many lepers were there? 
But what did the Syrians hear? Tell your neighbor, it don't take a whole lot of us. God can save by many or he can save by a few. All it takes is somebody with some guts. I watch these guys go in there and they, he calls them to hear the, the army to hear the, the noise of chariots and noise of horses. Now there were no chariots. I ain't mentioned about no chariots. There were no horses. Kirkland, there were no horses. These are four lepers. Now if you understand lepers, I've seen lepers before, Gershman. We saw lepers over in Africa. If you've seen lepers, lepers can hardly move. Their body is literally falling apart. Literally parts are falling off their body depending on how bad it is. So, so they're, they're just dragging. They're dragging along. But they're dragging in faith. I'm telling you, if you got to drag yourself along, just drag in faith. Because God is on your side. And God will cause your enemies to hear. And you'll look greater than you really are because God is on your side. And What? Wait. They're pressing their way, Sister Carolyn? Because they're pressing their way. God calls the enemy to have a manifestation of the spirit. Did y'all, y'all, did y'all miss that? The enemy had a manifestation of the spirit. The enemy had a supernatural encounter. See, the supernatural works on our behalf but it works against your enemy. The Lord calls them to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army, make you look bigger than what you are. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, watch verse 7. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight. Now what time did the, did the, the lepers leave? At twilight. That's what it says in verse 5. That's right. The lepers got up at twilight and started moving. So as soon as the lepers started moving. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. The Holy Ghost just brought this back to me to say this to you. I, I want you to be excited about you moving. But God's telling me to tell you tonight. He's going to have somebody else moving on your behalf. See, when they asked Jesus Christ, Jesus, what, what, must, what are our works? And he said, your work is not to do no work. Your work is to believe. So your so believing is work. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all gotta hear what I'm saying to you. Please, please hear me. Believing is work itself. Yeah, what you do for 40 hours? I believe. I work on getting my belief up. I spend time in the word to get my belief up. Faith by, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray in the Holy Ghost and build myself up in my most holy faith. I'm getting my faith. I'm getting my believing up. That's my work. Christopher, do you know how you're going to come out of debt? You don't know how you're going to come out of debt? It's by getting in the word. It's by fasting. It's by praying. It's by you building yourself up to you believe. And while you're doing that work, God's going to have some lepers somewhere. That's going to cause your creditors. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? This is your work. It's to believe. Because if you can believe. Then all things become possible to you. Yeah. 
So thank God for the lepers that God sent it on my behalf. Tell your neighbor, I'm digging in. Come on, say it loud. I'm digging in. I'm pressing in. Say it real good. I'm digging in. I'm pressing in. I'm building my faith. I'm building my faith. I'm putting in the time to get rid of all the unbelief. So all I do is believe. Come on, so all I do is believe. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. Woman with this, your blood comes. So the whole parade stops. Because he has to deal with this. Well, no, she dealt with the issue. Jesus, Jesus didn't even know anything about it. She, the Bible says, she came in the press. Oh, y'all missed that. The Bible says in Mark 5, she came in the press behind. <laughs> In other words, she pressed her way into Jesus. And she, she snatched a miracle. Caught Jesus off guard. He didn't even know about it. Jesus Christ didn't get a word of knowledge. He didn't get a word of wisdom. He didn't get a direction from the spirit. She just went up there and snatched her healing. What? Snatched? You can snatch your money? You can snatch your miracle. You can snatch your breakthrough. And, and and so and so and so she pressed in, got her miracle. While that's going on, the people run from Jairus' house and say, Jesus, and say, Jairus, don't bother Jesus anymore. Uh, your daughter is too late. It's too late. It's too late. She's dead. What is never too late? Tell your neighbor, it's never too late. And nothing's ever too far gone. They said, Jairus, don't worry him anymore. She's dead. Let's call a, call a mortuary. Call a funeral home. Let's just plan the funeral. Jesus said, don't listen to them. He said, be not afraid. Only. What? Only what? Only believe. Because if you can believe. In other words, Jairus, maintain the same faith that you had when you came to get me. Hold fast your confidence. <laughs> Hebrews 10. Uh, 25, 20. No, Hebrews 10, I think it's 23. In the King James. Hebrews 10. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he. What? So don't change your profession of faith. Just, just, just because things start looking, they're tending downward. If you started in faith, Stay in faith. And if you stay in faith, finish in faith. Don't change your confession. Tell your neighbor, don't change your confession. Why? Because he who promised it is faithful. So you stay faithful. He's faithful, you stay faithful. I am healed. No, I am healed. No, I, I am healed. I, I am him. Uh, yeah, I, I am healed. Yeah, doc, uh, uh, I hear that, but I am healed. I am healed. Body, I feel that, but I am healed. Body, I, yeah, I, ooh, but I am healed. Ooh, uh, but I am healed. 
Ooh, but I am healed. Oh, but I, but I am healed. Ooh, but I am healed. <laughs> I might have lay down, but I'm healed. I might be crying, but I'm healed. See, I don't, I don't, I don't change my profession. I am rich. <laughs> so say it, I am rich. I am rich. I am, I am rich. I am rich. I do have abundance. I live in abundance. I'm abundantly supplied. All my needs are met. All my bills are paid in full. All my debt is canceled and eliminated. I am rich. No, I, I, can't, I can't go out this week, but I am rich. See, I don't change based on what I see. And if you feel, guess what? If you feel yourself changing, you need to press in a little, little bit harder. If, if, if you feel doubt and unbelief starting to rise up, you need to press in a little bit, little bit, little, press in a little bit, little more, little more, little more, little more, little more, little more. A little more. Go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. You gotta go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm blessed. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. <laughs> so I, I got hold fast my professional faith. Jesus told Jesus told Jairus, he said, Don't be afraid, to only believe. Now remember what happened now. We we don't Back in 2 Kings 7, those four lepers, you know, they went and did their, their everything. Go, go back to 2 Kings 7, because I, I, I want to make this point, then, then I can preach tonight. <laughs> 2 Kings 7, verse 17. No, let's, let's, let's start at verse 18. Now, remember what the Lord uh, had said. <laughs> right? So it happened. Boy, I just got excited for me. So it happened. See, tomorrow you're going to be saying, so it happened. Just as a man of God said, this, it happened. You're going to wake up Friday with a big smile on your face. You're you going to call somebody, you're going to send a text. It happened. Somebody going to call you at 5 a.m. Hey! You're going to say, what, what, what? It happened. just as the man of God had spoken to the king saying two seeds of barley for a shekel and a sale of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria it's going to happen because it's right it's settled and it's truth Then that officer, that unbeliever, had answered the man of God and said, now look, if the Lord would make the windows of heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. That man, verse 20, and so it happened to him. For the people trampled him in the gate. So wait a minute. Unbelief not only make you miss out, but you could, you could die from it. Unbelief can kill you dead. Send you, send you headlong to hell. Go to Revelation 21. Go to Revelation, Revelation 21. Revelation 21. Shukarabasatalamatatadarabasatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
Revelation 21. Are y'all there? Verse 6. And he said to me, what? I like that. Tell you that, but it is done. Um, listen, you better, you better get this in your spirit because when you go home at night and the devil starts talking to you before you go to sleep, you're going to say, shut up, devil, it's done. Shut up, devil, it's done. Yeah, and tell your soul, shut up, soul, it's done. Shut up, reasoning, it's done. Shut up, intellect, it's done. The Lord said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who presses in. Y'all see that word presses in, right? That's what thirst is all about. You press it in. You have a, such a strong desire to, to be in the presence of, Lord, of the Lord and to receive from him. You're just thirsty. You press in for it. When you're thirsty, listen, anybody ever been thirsty? Boy... Remember, boy, we used to be out in the summertime, especially the summertime, and we'd be out out there playing football, playing stickball. Y'all don't, y'all don't know. <laughs> Nobody know what that is? Stick, nobody know what a stickball is? How many of y'all know what stickball is? Yeah, raise your hand. All right. You take a handle, a broom handle, mop handle, and you, had a, you, you get whatever little ball you can find. You know, we'd have baseball bats, praise the Lord. You got a stick in a rock, a stick in a tennis ball or whatever, soda can or something. Stick ball. Five rollers. We used to, y'all know five rollers. Come on now. We used to play a football game called Kill the Carrier. Oh, y'all know about Kill the Carrier, right? And you be out there, boy, in that summer sun. And, uh, you know, we had those paved streets. And we played in the street, touching the street, tackling the grass. And, boy, we'd be hot, sweaty, and just thirsty. And, you know, you couldn't just go inside the house. No, see, see, I'm, I'm <laughs> see these kids, they, they go in and out. But, see, we, we could just run in the house. Don't, don't come in and out my door. But I'm thirsty. See that water hose out there? See these young kids, they don't know what I'm talking about. They, they, they raised so bougie today. They don't. Back in our day, you got, you got a water hose. Well, we call it city gin. Right? Come on now. You turn that water hose on and watch, watch, watch. At first you had to wait for all the warm water to run out. That water come out, it'd be all warm from the, from the sun. Once it turned cool, you go, Ooh. give me some, give me some, pass it, pass it. Don't put your mouth on it, man. And I see some of y'all saying, I would never do that. You weren't thirsty. But when you get thirsty, oh, hungry. We used to be hungry in the, in the summertime, Malika. And, and we, we, didn't, we didn't have, you know, boar's head, ham and boar's head, cheese, and that nature's own wheat, wonder, white, whatever, no. You had some old wonder dandy bread and, and, and some mayonnaise. Some of y'all talking about meat. No, it ain't no meat. I remember one time my, my, my dad, my dad got, got, got smart and bought a meat plan. We got a deep freezer, so the first thing you do when you get a deep freezer is you buy a meat plan. And in this meat plan, it came with all these lunch meats. And I never ate so much liverwurst in my life. Liv- y'all know what liverwurst is? I know y'all saying, that's nasty. But when you hungry, 
When you hungry, ain't nobody running to Burger King and McDonald's and Taco Bell. No, you better get you want some that liverwurst out that freezer. Thaw it out first thing in the morning so it's ready by the time lunchtime comes around. Somebody know about some ramen noodles? I would never eat that. When you hungry, the Bible says to a hungry man, every bitter thing is sweet. To a hungry man, every bitter thing, even out, it don't matter if it tastes good. That's, all right, let me get it. I give the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Right, let me hurry up. Verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. He who, he who, this is the victory that overcomes the world, what? Even our faith. It's the world overcoming faith. So you don't qualify for verse 7 without faith. And you can't get this kind of faith just on Sunday morning for an hour. This kind of faith, this kind of power. Yeah, tomorrow, you talking about tomorrow? Yeah, that's right, that's right, at least. Tomorrow faith, believe in something's going to turn around tomorrow? Some of y'all already been pressing in. So your faith already tells you, oh, God can do this by tomorrow. Your faith already tells you, God will do this by tomorrow. Now, some of y'all, if you haven't been pressing in, just start now. It ain't too late. Because as soon as you're ready, it'll just take a tomorrow. Come on now. It, when God spoke to Abraham and Sarah, Abraham was 75, Sarah was 65. It took God 24 years to get their faith built up. And by the time their faith got built up, by the time uh, Abraham became fully persuaded, that God could perform his word. By the time Sarah had judged God faithful, now he's 99, she's 89, and the angel comes in, comes in him and now says, by this time in nine months. See, once your faith gets built up, you get a by this time. Yeah, did y'all just catch that? See, if you never take, take time to get your faith built up, there'll, there'll never come a, an exacting date. See, if you never get your faith built up, it'll always be one day, Lord. It'll be one of these days. But once your faith gets built up to a point that you can believe the word of God in full persuasion, then God will come and say, by this time tomorrow. Or prepare yourself, because in three days, we're going to pass over. The children of Israel had been in bondage in Egypt for 400 plus years. And the man of God came and said, God's going to do something. It took them a long time to get their faith there. But once they got there, God said, hey, go to bed ready. Because in the morning, we're we going to ride out. Go to bed ready, he said. I was in Kentucky a couple weeks ago, and, and I, I, my, my flight back home was uh, going to be like five, four or five in the morning, something like that. And uh, we, we were, were going to leave the house about three something in the morning. Now, we didn't even get home from church till after midnight. But I was ready to come home. Praise the Lord. I'm excited about going home. And what happened? I got to bed about one o'clock. But I went to bed dressed. I don't care if you talk about me. I'm just telling you. Because I was not going to let my ride. <laughs> I got to get to there. So I, I got fully dressed other than my shoes. My shoes are right there. I had on my pants, my shirt, my socks, everything. All I do is get up, brush my teeth, put my shoes on. Let's ride out. Now, I'd already showered. 
I'd already packed everything up. I'm ready. I'm telling you, when you, when you get your time stamp on something, you better go to bed ready. All right. He overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 8. Now, here's what I wanted you to see. Here's what I wanted you to see. But, but, the cowardly. King James, I think, used the word fearful. So, <laughs> fearful, you know, that's nice. I like the way the new King James puts it. Cowards. What happened to that man who, at the, at that, at the, who the king leaned on? He was a coward. He was, he was, he was, what's this next one? Unbelieving. Now look at this list here. Cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we talk about the, the murderers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and the sexual immoral. But look, look who, God's put, who God puts right at the top of the list. Coward or fearful, unbelieving people at the top of the list. You said that, girl. The sexually immoral can get saved and everything. Everybody can get turned around. But when you're a coward and unbelieving, you, 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 you got to really work at that change and renewing your mind. So the coward and unbelieving are those who draw back. They're retreaters. They're deserters. There's a guy... Uh, I think his name Bergdahl right now. He's, he's, about, to, he's about to face trial. Trial. He's in the military. And uh, he, he laid out this story that he, he had been captured by Taliban or somebody like that. And uh, as it turns out, he, all, all the guys in his group was like, no, ain't nobody captured this man. What you talking about? Turned out he had deserted his, his, uh, his post or his troop or whatever it is. He went AWOL on him. So now he's about to be court-martialed. For deserting. They say you're a coward. You're going to go to jail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this and I'll, 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 let me close out. We'll try to get to this Sunday. Joshua. Uh, John 6, I think is verse 29. Let's get that on the screen, please. I want y'all to see that. I think it's John 6, 29. Yeah. In fact, let's start at verse 28. And we'll close here. We'll close here. I don't want you to be all stirred and riled up. And then uh, don't go into the application process. Verse 28. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? What shall we do? See, they're used to doing something that we may work the works of God. Well, Pastor, are you saying now we don't have to do anything? No, I'm not saying you don't have to do anything because the Bible tells us that we have to labor to enter into that rest. But now what you do <laughs> is what gets you to verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Him is Jesus, who is the word. So I believe on Jesus and I believe on his word that he sent, which is right, settled, and truth. So I need to do whatever it takes Barbara, you need to do whatever it takes 
to believe that. If I got to fast, if I got to pray, if I got to stay in the Word 24 hours a day, whatever it takes to believe. Because it's already settled. So the only thing between me and my miracle or me and my manifestation is my belief. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. <coughs> right? That's Mark 9, 24. I believe. Help my unbelief. So if I can get my belief up, how are you going to do it? It's by pressing in. It's by pressing in. Sunday, Lord's willing, I'll, I'll deal with this part about uh, what, part of what that takes. Because I, I got a lot, a lot of scriptures, a lot more notes here. On, on how we get there because uh, it's going to take some some sweeping changes. How many of you are willing for you to change your lifestyle for a while so that God can change it forever? God, I'm willing to alter my schedule at least for a while so that you can free up my schedule forever. How many of y'all would like God to free up your schedule? Amen. You know what it looks like to have, have God free up your schedule? That means you ain't punching a clock. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, can you believe that? Yeah. Well, I got my own business. It means you'll be priests and, and strangers are going to feed your flock. But I've got, I've got to labor to enter, enter that rest to get my belief up where I can re- receive from God. And when I get to that point, and listen, I'm telling you, when you get to that point, then God will say something like tomorrow or in three days or by this time next year. Get yourself ready. Prepare yourselves. Hallelujah. Because it's on the way. It shall be done. It shall be done. Psalm 33, verse 4. God's word is right. Psalm 119, verse 89. His word is forever settled in heaven. So I got to get it settled down in my heart. John 17, 17. His word is truth. Sanctify them with your truth or by your word, by your truth or by your word. So we sanctify ourselves by the word of God. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. How many of y'all, you're, you're reading every day? Whether it's Proverbs or something else you're reading every day. How many of y'all, when, when you read every day, sometimes you don't really feel like you got anything out of it? Come on, tell the truth. Oh, it happens to me. You, Pastor, yeah, there's plenty of days I read the word of God and I didn't really get any, there was no bright lights, there was no sparks, there was no lightning. But can I tell you something? That word is going into your heart and it is changing and rearranging things. (laughs) And what's happening is it's starting to flush out error. Glory to God. And the truth is coming in. And fill it up your heart. Dig, how, how do you flush a radiator? You flood it with water. So you pour something in to push something else out. So the more we pour in the word, the more it flushes out the error. The more we pour in the truth, it flushes out all that deception from the enemy. The more we pour in the word on healing. (laughs) Y'all see that? The more we pour in the word on God's prosperity, it'll flush out all the other junk. Before you know it, you'll be a whole brand new clean, clean system. Flowing in power. How God, boy, we jumped on this this morning. 
in, in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God, if you, if you pour in the word, it'll flush out all the junk. Before you know it, you'll be so full of the Holy Ghost and power that you can go about doing good, which means you have to be rich or supplied to do good, philanthropy, it's doing good. And then you can go about healing all those. Freely you receive, freely give, you can heal people. Bring deliverance wherever you go. Is that all right? Yeah. Do y'all receive that? Yeah. Well, give God a shout of praise and thanksgiving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. You know, I, I, I believe our young people got that tonight. I mean younger than you. I mean some of our teenagers got that. I believe some of our children got that tonight. I believe they're getting an idea and a clue of how to prosper in this life without going through the world system. Without going through all the changes and the rigmarole, you got to go in the world, trying stuff out and, you know, test drive and all that kind of junk. No, <laughs> you're learning that if I can believe, God will do it. God can get me into college debt free if, if that's where he wants me to go. God can bring the right spouse into my life. Whatever, 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 God can do it. Glory to God. So tonight you're going to go to bed excited in expectation. It doesn't matter how long you've been in that condition, in that state, in that situation. By this time tomorrow. If you can believe that. You ought to come in here Sunday running. I come in Sunday. People, people who are not here tonight gonna look at you like, what, what, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all, y'all crazy? We, lo we lost our minds. We literally lost our minds. We left our minds back on Tuesday. From Wednesday on, we've been in faith. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, tonight we say thank you for your word that is everlasting and eternal. Your word that is forever settled in heaven. Your word that is right. Your word that is truth. Thank you, Lord, that tonight you have given a rhema word to us outside of my plans, outside of what I had laid out, God, but you know just what we need. And God, we receive the word of the Lord tonight that by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, that things will be turned around in our lives. Glory to God. Thank you that, Lord, this is the year of us crossing over. We're crossing over collectively and we're crossing over individually. Thank you for the astounding and astonishing things you're doing in our lives. The things that, according to your word, they are done. They are done. So, God, we commit ourselves now to do whatever it takes to build our faith, to build ourselves up in the word so that we can uh, be ready to receive and move in into what you have for us. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Help our unbelief. So, Lord, we're asking you for divine assistance. Supernatural help, Lord. As we pray in the spirit. Lord, we build ourselves up in our most holy faith. As we pray in the spirit, God, the spirit of truth goes through, searches out in us those areas of doubt and unbelief. The Holy Spirit goes through and finds those plants, those trees 
that are there that you didn't plant and they get uprooted and plucked up out of our lives. So then every tree is a tree that you've planted. Trees of life, trees of peace, trees of health, trees of prosperity, trees of good and not evil. In the name of Jesus. So Father, thank you for our work and this to believe. Thank you, Father, for those lepers that will move on our behalf. Lord, things unbeknownst to us are happening even now. We thank you, Lord, that there are meetings going on. <laughs> Discussions going on. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> totally unbeknownst to us. <laughs> Decisions are being made. Somebody's having a dream tonight that concerns us. <laughs> Somebody, somebody won't, even, won't even hardly be able to sleep because they're, they're, you, you're, you're putting us on their minds. We trust you that by this time tomorrow, God, it won't be long now. Thank you for the great and mighty things that you, that you answer and you show us. God, we, we love you so much and thank you for it. And uh, we're going to boast in the Lord. <laughs> We're going to talk you up. Yeah. We're going to tell everybody, you have done it. Yeah. You have done it. Yeah. Our faithful God will tell all the world that Jesus is the answer. Lord, we praise you and we glorify you tonight. We thank you for fellowship and communion in the Holy Ghost. I pray, Father, you just continue to strengthen us with might by your spirit. Our inner man, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, give God a final prayer.